Good afternoon, my friends. I want to talk today about how to prevent relapses in your brain rewiring journey of recovery from chronic illness and why in conjunction with that later stage recovery is necessary and it's not something that's included in most programs. FYI, I also am getting over an illness. So if I seem puffy or nasally, that's why. Um, okay, so this is so key. One of the biggest things I work with in my practice is people who either come back to me after I worked with them at early stage because they have a reactivation or relapse or people who come to me for the first time because they were never able to fully achieve or maintain the recovery or they've had a reactivation or relapse. And the biggest thing here to understand, again, is the principle of what we're doing when we rewire our brains and how it creates health. We're getting that stress switch off completely and we're wanting to stay, create a lifestyle where we stay in relaxation chemistry, meaning you're feeling at peace and relaxed like 90 to 98% of the time, like most of the time. And only having that stress switch turn on and come back off pretty quickly if you have a stressful situation happen. And that's one thing to understand. And if you can imagine the world we live in, that's a pretty significant task to build that. Now, again, the, most people who have limbic impairment had trauma-based patterns that they were running on for their whole life. So we, when we have, you know, really acute limbic impairment and chronic illness, it's one thing to get yourself out of a place where your whole life revolves around symptoms and trying to manage them. That's one thing. But for most people, what happens is they do that and then they go right back to the patterns they had that got them in that position to the first in the first place. Those could be things like pushing, meaning always pushing past your brain and nervous system's actual limits of how much load they can handle with without very much resource. Um, or things like people pleasing, fawning, having a, a severe scarcity mindset, having unprocessed trauma that has you um, not taking your own needs into account, living a life based on other people's values, feeling very limited, having a lot of limiting beliefs about things like money or relationships or whether or not you're worthy of love or having a job that you like or a lifestyle that suits you. And that puts us back into a state of stress. We go right out of the out of recovery, right back into you know, not taking our brain and nervous system into account, just kind of living in survival, whatever comes up, the jobs, the jobs that I had to do this, the kids, this happened with my kids, this happened with my relationship or my marriage or my family. And then we just go right back into survival. You know, we're handling a, a situation and we're right back in fight, flight, freeze. And then a lot of times we, you know, if we do that for any extended length of time, you're going to end up quite limbic again. That's just what's going to happen. So what later stage recovery is, and this is the key, if you really want to move forward, stay with me for this next part is building a life based on a couple of things. Learning what your unique brain and nervous system need to remain regulated. So this is kind of like the physical aspect of that. Like how much time do you need doing things that create dose, like playing, hobbies, rest, connection with others, co-regulation, making sure that in an, your value system is the big biggest umbrella of your bigger picture values and that's so I'm going to use a few examples from, you know, my journey with building a value system because that's what I've got. So bigger picture, like two of many of mine are freedom and purpose. So as I go through life, I ask, you know, does believing this or choosing this or responding to a situation, does it add to or take away from my freedom? Does is it aligned with my purpose or does it detract from my purpose? That's so bigger picture things like that. And then you've got kind of your your normal human values like, OK, for me, mothering my children as well as I can is a value of mine and I've worked hard to be able to do that. So things like even caring for my home or making food, you know, homemade food for my kids, which I value and proactively meeting their needs, spending time with them. Those are all things that my brain used to perceive as really big loads that were a stressor and kind of a nuisance. And once I stepped back and made the conscious decision that this is really important to me and I'm going, it's really important to me to be able to do this. And that, so I really started to put meaning into it. And now those things feel like a privilege and they generate dose instead of stress. And then again, you have your, okay, what are my needs? I know for myself, I still like to meditate regularly because I like it. I take walks every day, one or two, make sure I value, re prioritize rest. And that could mean watching a movie in the evening. It could be sometimes I'll take a whole day on the weekend and just like sleep until 1 p.m. and not get out of bed for another hour and a half and just like take my time doing everything and just really have a day, which might not be available to everybody. But it's over time building a lifestyle where... And what this does, where you stay in dose, is you have stability because of who you are. 
not because of what's happening in your brain or your life. So if you encounter an ebb in, in your later stage or in maintenance, you can look at, okay, what's the brain science? Is there a reason? Why am I in this ebb? Okay, now I know what to do to, to kind of rewire this. And what's the value? Because that's the thing is life's unpredictable. Stuff's going to happen. And when stuff happens and you have a strong value system, you can say, all right, well, in this situation, whatever it is, whether it's with work or family or whatever, here's the value that I'm, that I can live out. Even in this situation, I can't do anything I want here. Life is kind of giving me, but what's the value I can live out? How can I live out my freedom right now? How can I live out my self-love right now? How can I live in my value of being generous and caring towards others or having fun given this situation? And then our brain has predictability. And that is so important for safety. Our brains and our nervous systems need to have a sense that we can create a predictable experience for ourselves in unpredictable circumstances. And so now your life is grounded and based in you. It's coming from you. It's grounded in you. It's not based on circumstance. And if you're in Curious Observer, you're still integrated, your understanding of the brain and nervous system, and you're in later stage and you encounter, like you have someone pass away, you wean off a medication, you um, have a stressful event at work, you enter into a new relationship, there's some new stressor in your life, you have a baby, and you notice your brain and nervous system being kind of wonky instead of going, oh my goodness, am I, is something wrong? Am I relapsing? This is so scary. What if everything just happens again? How do I know that I can stay healthy? You recognize, oh, Oh yeah, this is a stressor. This is a big load on my system. Okay, what do I need more of right now as I go through this specific event? How can I resource my system? You know, it is our, a value system or a belief that I have contributing? I know for me, one big one was I had this belief from my childhood that the only way to make a living for my life was to always be um, working myself to the point of exhaustion. And I lived that out for a while. It didn't work. I burnt out three times in the last two years and it's taken a lot of revamps to figure out how to change that belief and really put it into action that I can work in an amount that is in my training zone and enjoy it and still make enough living for my family. So that's one example of, of these kind of beliefs that can drive our activation. So we stay in Curious Observer. We have a predictability. We have stability. And again, when you are making sure your regulatory needs are part of your lifestyle, that rest and play are built into your life. They're not this annoying extraneous thing you only do when you're feeling activated. It's a, it's a thing where you realize I'm human. And if you look at the other animals, they spend most of their time resting and playing and only a little bit of it like hunting or doing any kind of work, building, things like that. So, you know, those are basic needs we all have. And most of us were not raised to believe that. We were raised that work first, Work, 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 perform, perform, achieve, achieve. That's the, the, the norm. Or just having some sort of baseline of stress or suffering. That's what most people, not everybody, but most people were raised with. So starting to see your need for rest and connection and play as a basic part of being human is in itself a big shift. And then having, again, the predictability of your value system and the way that things that have been or could be objectively stressful can become something that give you a lot of meaning and that shifts your state from sympathetic crosswired. You, know, you could be in sympathetic, you might be in a bit of overdrive, but it's passion, it's meaning, it's love, it's connection, it's purpose. It's not overwhelm and chaos and I don't know how to cope with this. It's just too much for me. It goes from feeling out of control to being within something that you've chosen. And that's how you maintain your recovery. And this is, again, this, this is not taught by any brain rewiring program I've seen, but because I work so much with relapses and reactivations, I wanted to put this out there. That's a lot of the workshops I have created and continue to create. And my overall focus in my work with this is on later stage and maintenance, because we've gotten to the point, like a lot of people work with early stage, just believing you can recover and getting out of that acute state. But in order to maintain that and not be in a constant cycle of, you know, using tools to recover and then sliding right back into survival over and over again, because I see people do this, they can, you can literally just spend forever doing that if you'd never have these, this later stage information available to you and put it into practice. So there's your, your tidbit for today on how to prevent relapse and what later stage recovery is about and how it works. Love you guys.